So, now is learning possible with convolutions and max pooling? Well, first it just worked, not like <laughs> you just built a system, but let's see why it works and how it works. Now, so effectively, if we want to uh, backprop through a convolutional layer, we can express the forward pass as this. Now where we have a matrix on the left-hand side, we have the weights, we have the outputs. And we can calculate, not like what we have here on the right-hand side, are just the standard equations for, uh, well, convolutions. Now like uh, here we have 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, these four, and then here we have these four, and here we have those four, and lastly here we have those four. And our goal is to compute the local gradients. Uh, we want to know the derivative uh, of uh, the weights after uh, the, the derivatives of the outputs after the weights, and the derivative of the outputs after the inputs. So let's see what we have there. Now, like we can apply it here to the left. We're going to get four terms. We can apply it here to the right. We're going to get four terms and so on and so forth. And now this means that we have this as the gradients. Look, this x4, uh, x22 is going to be used by all four locations. That's why the derivative after it has four different terms. Now you see each of the four outputs has an influence on that. The others always have at most two of them. But this way we can basically calculate the derivatives. Now, importantly, we can also generally express convolution as a matrix where we could say we take the input, we convert it into a vector, and then convolution is just a multiplication there. So we have a linear operation. Convolution, convolution is simply a dot product between the kernel and local regions of the input. And we can therefore produce a, scratch, a stretched kernel. Now what you have here is you have 16, assuming that we have a four by four input. If we have that, then these uh, positions here appear at different places in here. Now in each row, we have nine of them three rows here and now for each of these you sometimes have four that are relevant or few of them. Now we can express convolution as a matrix multiplication. We take this stretched out kernel, we take that flattened input, we flatten input into call matrix and we just have a regular matrix multiplication between these two and for such a multi uh, matrix multiplication of course the gradients are perfectly well defined. Now that leads us with the other part, which is we need to do backpropagation through a max pooling layer. Now, locally max is linear with respect to the maximum value. No, at any given point of time, one value will be larger than the others, unless you're at that place where they're all the same, which, uh, uh, which uh, will effectively never happen. And now what do we have here? Now, y is max of x1 through xn. The derivative is one if it's the maximum and it's zero otherwise. And so in addition to storing the maximal value, all Autograd has to do is score the in, uh, store the index corresponding to that value and then treat it as if all the others had no input. Now, I want you to think a little bit what's happening there. Will there be zero gradient with respect to some of the weight? Think uh, And think how stride max pool and so forth affect the the, the gradients. Let, let, let me highlight why this could be happening. Now, like only out of the inputs, only the one that is the largest will have any influence. So, and that, mean, that means that all the others have zero influence. Now, does that mean that we might, should expect that some of the weights will carry a zero gradient here? 